Hey friends, justice is swerved. To this point, I have not addressed the George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin case, um, but now that the verdict is reached, I look around and again I wonder what road I'm living in. Uh, the very fact that the media covered this case the way it did led me to question the whole thing and so I didn't spend much energy on it over the last 14 months. Uh, this was an obvious show trial meant to either cause a distraction or chaos. Um, and the other red flag, another red flag was raised when President Obama said, um, You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. What does that even mean? But think about it. When has, or why would, a president stoop to make such a comment on such a case? Just think about it. But let's look at George Zimmerman. Did he take a life? Yep. Uh, was he a wannabe cop? Yep. Was he justified in it? I don't know. The jury said yes. This was a jury picked by both the defense and the prosecution. Uh, was he completely innocent? I don't think so. He could have stayed in his car. He could have stayed in his vehicle, and you know, I guess he didn't have to get out with his loaded gun. Uh, or look at Trayvon. Did he make mistakes? Yeah. Uh, was he found to be uh, a history of burglary? Yeah. Drug possession? Yeah. Does that mean he deserved to die? No. Did his actions threaten Zimmerman's life? I don't know, the jury believes so. It seems both Zimmerman and Martin escalated the situation and that they put themselves in. It is what it is, a tragedy. A 17 year old is dead, a family lost their son, friends lost their friend, uh, a brother lost his brother. A big, under, a big misunderstanding that led to one tragedy. But, and uh, Zimmerman will live the rest of his life with a target on his back and the whole thing sucks. There could be no winners out of it. But what about all the other tragedies? See, the other tragedies don't mesh with the storyline that the media is pushing. So they want you to think there's some kind of large racist conspiracy of murders against blacks, but you only need to look at the FBI statistics to see that that's just not the case. If you look at the homicides involving blacks, over 90% of them were killed by other blacks. And even with the whites, just under 90% are killed by other whites. So there's not to belittle the deaths, but it's just fact that generally like kills like. Sure, there are cases to the contrary. I'm not saying there's no racism, but it's just way blown out of proportion. And the media made a spectacle out of a problem that isn't really there. Uh, you can also see that how they labeled Zimmerman as a white Hispanic. Like, what is that? Do these same people label the president as a white black? No, I haven't heard it. I don't even care about Obama's color. He's just a nefarious puppet anyway. But what they're doing is so obvious, and it's all very dishonest and distracting from the real issues. And really, shame on you if you are fool enough to be distracted by them. Uh, but, but why am I making this video? I'm making this video for the other killings which are ignored by the mainstream news. So what about the thousands of tragedies that have occurred since? Don't they matter? Where are their 14 months of news coverage? There are still thousands of killings in the ghettos year over year, but I guess these feelings just don't fit the narrative, huh? The dupes see on TV that they're supposed to get wrought up in the streets and about this one case. Meanwhile, all these murders are still going on in their communities. What George Zimmerman is only a scapegoat for their community that has a problem which is too difficult for many to admit. Truth is, even if Zimmerman was found guilty, nothing would have changed. The, it's because the power structure is only interested in aiding chaos, but you want real change, you want justice. All right, let's have a real discussion. Let's talk about the 10,000 murders, roughly 10,000 murders of blacks since the Zimmerman Trayvon Martin altercation. Let's talk about the black kids in the ghetto who apparently are only worthy of a media blackout. Let's talk about how over 70% of black children are born out of wedlock. Let's talk about the number of blacks who grow up without a father figure. Let's talk about the systemic destruction of the black family unit. You see, let's see 14 months of media coverage talking about bringing real change of uh, responsibility and self-reliance. Uh, now, that shit really doesn't fit the narrative, does it? Uh, 
Let's talk about how slavery never really ended. Instead, instead of uh, rattling chains, they just suppress people with entitlements. Entitlements have, these entitlements have made the father figure null and void. You know, I know it's not only entitlements, it's also things that go on, uh, the denigration of the culture. You can look uh, at the article I just did a couple weeks ago about how the sounds and um, images, sounds and pictures change our brain. So I, I will also argue that the hip hop and rap culture doesn't exactly ingrain positive seeds in the minds of the youth. And the issues go on and on. And though the stats I just mentioned above are prevalent among the black community, I can see it trending upward in the white community and to that extent all of Western civilization. So listen, I don't have all the answers. I do have some suggestions that hopefully can bring about justice at least more so than protesting in the streets for someone you don't even know or something you aren't even familiar with. So instead of teaching kids to hold a grudge uh, over Trayvon, let's try teach them a better way to live. Teach, for the young boys, teach them how to treat a woman. Women are not just objects of pleasure, but they're there to be revered as your other half as God intended. They aren't trading cards. You know, you go, you court a girl, you take her out, take her to dinner, movie, all that stuff. When you decide she's the one you want to spend your life with, you marry her and then you make babies. And then you foster those babies in a loving environment with a father and a mother. Your children will see you treat their mother like a queen, so they will learn to treat their wife or they will expect to be treated like a queen when they grow up. For the girls, you must spend your energy teaching them self-respect, not just how to keep a man because they will forsake everything with the intent of keeping a man and forsake their own values and compromise themselves for that end. So teach them that they're not predestined to, be, to have to be exposed to anything. They don't have to put up with a lack of respect from a man to keep them. I've seen way too, much, uh, way too many times a dude will sweet talk a girl uh, in it. A sweet talk woman into sex, she'll end up wanting to have a kid with him so in hopes that he'll be more attached and stick around. But all this does is make him make it easier for him and he'll just go around and do with more women and it goes on and on. So guys, you are the rock for your family. You know, take responsibility and act like it. Treat your woman like a like the queen she is. Girls, you're beautiful, your bodies are your temples. Don't just give that away to anybody. You know, save it for the one who values you most. If some guy will only stay with you if you give him sex, see ya. That's simple. I know this isn't fail-proof. It's, it's downright archaic in the 21st century. But I also know that there's a direct correlation between crime, delinquency, and the lack of a father figure. Basically, if the morals are not corrected, the battle is already lost. Throwing money at the problem won't do anything. George Zimmerman going to jail won't do anything. Won't make any difference whatsoever. So don't look for a scapegoat. Let's look at ourselves and let's change this shit, alright? God bless.